Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Friday. Okay, so we are still talking about punctuation because they're so important. They help us. Um, when the writer puts them there, it helps us understand the story and it helps us read smoother or fluently. All right, so um, this week we talked about, uh, we always review our period, question mark, exclamation point, and comma. But this week we learned about the ellipsis, right? The three dots, no more, no less, but three dots were suspense, it's like a dramatic pause, or you didn't finish your sentence, or the sentence didn't finish because you turned the page and then it finished, right? So the ellipsis, I've actually noticed them. I don't know if you have, but I've seen them almost in like every story that I've been reading this past week. So they are in our stories a lot. Writers like them. But today I want to talk about, and I've been saying this, and some of my students have always said, what are those things? Okay, they look a little bigger here, but I tried to um, kind of zoom in here. Quotation marks. Yes, quotation marks. Someone might go like this for quotation marks. They come, they're almost like, they almost look like commas in the air. Yeah, or kind of flipped upside down commas. Usually I might just make like a small line in the air. Um, they come two by two. Okay, so the ellipsis was three dots, no more, no less. The quotation marks, it's a long word, quotation marks, right? Um, come to, and then you say, the writer might be saying what the character's saying, and then you put the other two. So they come two by two, writer uses them two before and two when they're done, okay? And inside are words said by a character, all right? So I just put hi here, right? A character might've said hi to show that the character's talking, they use the quotation marks, two in the beginning and two at the end, okay? Until they're done showing what they're saying. Um, I also said they can be called speech marks. Um, in the video, if you clicked on the video before going to me, they called them speech marks because that's what the character's speaking, what they're saying, okay? Quotation marks, okay? Okay, and here's my cute little guys, my cute little quotation marks. How do you read them? Now, this can be, you can, um, a lot of times I like to try to sound like the character. When I see those quotation marks, I like to try to become the character. I might give them a different voice or I really am using my explanation point or my question marks now because it's what they're saying, okay? But sometimes though, it's hard to kind of become that voice. I don't really know I have a different voice. It just is my voice. Um, but at least those quotation marks are letting me know, the writer's letting me know what the character's actually saying. Okay, what they said, their words, right? When it's in the quotation marks, that's what the character said. Maybe they're telling us how they feel or they're saying something important. Those quotation marks in the air, right? Those commas almost in the air are letting us know as a reader, hey, alert, alert, the character's talking here. Pay attention, okay? So like I said, punctuation, is so important and it's for us, it's for the reader, right? The writer wants us to know this is what the character said. Yeah, and this is how the other character replied to them, okay? And I just used a fancy word reply. So um, quotation marks, okay. So the writer might use, um, you see it a lot, said, right? Help said the pigeon, right? Or help said piggy, right? Um, as our stories get more and more, you might see the word says, Okay, or I've been seeing now replied. That means they're answering something. Cried mean they could actually be crying or cried out, like they kind of yelled again. Exclaimed, that's kind of excited, like the exclamation point. Um, the writer might say asked, right? Then there's gonna be quotation marks, a sentence with a question mark because they asked, right? Or just yelled where they might put the two exclamation points. Like right here, it says, I want ice cream, yelled pigeon. No, 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 no. I want ice cream, yelled pigeon. Okay, I read that sentence. It's in quotation marks. I give that the excited part. And then I kind of read yelled pigeon like normally because there's that's there's no exclamation point after pigeon. There's It's not bold. There, there's no quotation marks around there. I'm reading the quotation marks, right? What's said inside of there as, of, as if I'm yelling like the pigeon, okay? And I don't really know what the pigeon sounds like. Sometimes I make it up, okay? Um, but I'll show you here, okay. Um, oh, I forgot the quotation marks there, but okay. Now, sometimes if it's a speech bubble, that's coming from the pigeon, but okay. So if you see, this is coming from the duckling, okay. And I, if you know me, how I've done um, pigeon books with the duckling in it, I try to make the duckling sound like cute and little because he is just so cute and little. So um, in the on the, on the first page, I go, is that a hot dog? See, that's not really my voice, but I kind of try to sound like, is that a hot dog? And the pigeon might just have my regular voice, but maybe a little strong, not just a hot dog, my hot dog, 
Okay, but you see the difference there? The quotation marks around the duckling. Okay, that's what the duckling said. So is that a hot dog? Yeah, right, I changed my voice a little bit. Now, do you remember Nuffle Bunny? Yeah, with um, Trixie and her dad. Okay, there was a lot of quotation marks in there. And I told you, hey, we're gonna learn about them later, okay? For Trixie, the baby, right? She was saying, I go fly, go kablabble, right? With speech bubbles coming out. And that, I try to make it sound a little, little silly, right? Because I'm trying to be like her. I go fly, go kablabble. But when the dad was talking, I tried to just sound kind of just not serious, but just just kind of regular, regular talk, not I go fly, go kablabble or shouting, right? Because the dad, there was no exclamation points here. Um, so if I'm the dad right here, see the quotation marks right there? So that's right, replied her daddy. Okay, so he said, that's right, right? Because he doesn't know what's going on, remember, with Trixie. So he's just like, that's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. So with the quotation marks, I know he said, that's right. And he said, we're going home. Trixie doesn't like the sound of that because she knows he left Nuffle Bunny back at the laundromat, right? But the writer put, Mo Wilms put the quotation marks to let us know what daddy was saying. Okay, so they're important. They, it helps us to get to know the characters more. When, the, when there's quotations in your stories, you kind of get an idea of what your character might be thinking, feeling, uh, saying, right? What kind of, what's their personality like? Because they they start talking, okay? So I wanted to read Norman, the slug with the silly shell. Yeah, yeah, it's a slug with a shell. The slugs don't have shells, but yes, okay? This is by Sue Hendra and Paul Lynette. Um, I like Norman. Um, <laughs> He doesn't look like a donut as a shell right now, right? So we're going to find out all about Norman here, the slug with the silly shell. Now, I'm not going to put arrows on each page, but I do want, I just wanted you to see right away, right? Um, see how those quotation marks, they do just kind of look like lines. They don't necessarily have the curve. Sometimes um, different fonts, different ways that writers use like the words in there, they'll have different styles of it. So the quotation marks or the speech marks up there, they kind of look like just two short lines. Okay, so just I just wanted you to see that. So Norman the slug thought snails were great. Wow, said Norman. So he said, wow, right? The quotation marks ending. And then he said, look at them, they're amazing. Okay, so he's excited. He's excited to see the shell, the snails. Oh, look at them. They do have pretty shells, pretty shells. But unfortunately, the snails didn't think Norman was great. Whee! Crash. Why would he jump on all of them? What why? Why would he do that? <laughs> I kind of like it, Norman. All right, so looks like I see quotation marks. So it looks like this is gonna be the other characters talking. So I'm kind of gonna not be as silly as Norman was. So Norman, you silly slug, they cried. You spoiled our fun. This only works if you got a shell. Kind of more of a serious kind of talk right there, right? Because it's the different characters. It's not, it's not our Norman character, right? So that's what they said, okay? So they're not happy about it. Norman felt left out. Sadly, 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 he sulked off into the moonlight. So just kind of like, you're kind of bummed out, right? You're just like really down. Oh, oh, look. Okay, there's no words on this page, but look, he's in, I can just see he's looking in the reflection and how the illustrator put the moon on. He's kind of thinking, oh, that could be a shell, right? Look, well, only. If only I had a shell of my own, he sighed, looking at his reflection. Okay, so that's what he said. And that's when he had an idea. Maybe I could have a shell after all, he thought, right? He's gonna talk to himself. He's like, maybe I could have a shell after all. That's what he said, okay? I know he said this because the quotation marks, even though it said he thought, he's like, is he's thinking out loud, okay? But finding a shell was not as easy as it seemed. One was too bouncy, one was too noisy. <laughs> it's got an alarm clock. I don't even think some of you know what that is. Um, that clock will ring at a certain time, okay? That's definitely too noisy. And one was already taken. <laughs> Do you see it's like an apple and there's a, there's a worm in there? Norman needed time to think. Ooh, do you see the ellipsis? Okay, so that sentence maybe will be completed on the next page or just like an unfinished thought, so let's see. Ooh, ta-da, a shell! Okay, so he needed time to think. Okay, so look, on this page, so it's almost like it was um, interrupted. That's why the ellipsis was there. So by the trash can, do you see that donut by the trash can? Okay, so Norman needed time to think. Ta-da, a shell, right? It kind of interrupted. It was perfect. Norman had never been happier. You could join the snails at last. That's not how a shell works. Yeah, he just tied a donut to his shell, <laughs> to himself. 
Norman loved being a snail. <laughs> Must be a hard donut. I feel like it would squish. And the snails love Norman's silly shell. Yeah, it is pretty silly compared to everyone else's, right? But the fun didn't last for long. Suddenly, there was a loud flapping of wings. Okay, so I have quotation marks here that says, look out, bird, cried the snails in panic. So they cried out, okay, they're, they're kind of yelling out. Quick, slither for your lives or we'll end up as supper. All right, so see how I changed my voice from just regular reading to what they said, right? Quick, slither for your lives or we'll end up as supper. Supper means like dinner. Oh no, what does the bird want? Yeah, I think he actually wants the donut. But the bird was more interested in Norman's silly shell. It looked delicious. Norman was being carried up, up, and away, higher, higher into the sky. What could he do? Oh, no. Be careful, Norman. What's he doing? Ooh, it looks really gross. I'm like shivering. That looks really gross, right? What's he doing? Norman did the only thing a slug could do. He made slime. Lots and lots of it. With a slither and a slather, a slip and a slide, Norman was free. Ah, but he was falling. Oh no, there's a donut. There's him. Ah, he's falling. Faster and faster and faster until there's our ellipsis. Dun, dun, dun. Until what? Until what happened? Oh no, I'm nervous. I thought this was just a silly story, but now the ellipsis has me as a suspense. I'm on the edge of my seat. What happened next? What happened? I'll turn the page. Plonk. Norman, Norman, are you okay? Asked the snails. So they've kind of like a worried, they, that's what they said. So um, they asked, that's a question and they kind of feel like worried. What happened to him? Let's see. <laughs> wow, said Norman, that was great. I love flying. If only I had wings. There's the ellipsis, right? Remember I said, sometimes the ellipsis is there when they're kind of like thinking, right? It doesn't really finish their thought. If only I had wings. He wants wings now, didn't he just want a shell? Norman, just be you, bud. Ta-da! Oh gosh, get ready for this. Get ready till you see his wings. Yep, I'm gonna turn the page now. Norman, that's not wings, that's underwear. Norman, oh my goodness. <laughs> didn't you like Norman? I liked Norman, right? Norman, I got to tell you some advice, though. You just got to be you, bud. You, as a slug, is pretty awesome. Don't try to be everyone else. But he really liked flying. Underwear is not going to make you fly. Anyway, punctuation, right? I say this all the time. Those little marks are important. The writer put them there for us to understand better. And now that we're learning those quotation marks, okay, we can really get to know our characters. That's what the character is saying, okay? Or asking or yelling or, or thinking out loud. That's what they're doing. The writer wants us to know that, okay? So um, I hope you notice your quotation marks in your stories, okay? They should be there with other characters that are talking. And um, next week on Monday, I'm gonna really try and sound like our characters, okay? I'm gonna try to read the three little pigs because I know you know that, right? But I really wanna try and sound like our characters with those quotation marks, okay? So I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you back here on Monday.